Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Tower of God New World. In today's video, we are going to talk about the two top support characters in the game, Garam and Albelda. And we're pretty much going to discuss the pros and cons between both characters because I feel like it's really important to figure out, you know, which unit is very powerful and which unit is better than the other. But of course, at the end of the day, as long as both units are very strong, that's all that matters. You can still use them. So we're going to do that, but before I continue, make sure you guys check out my brand new Pokemon TCG Pocket video. It's on a new game that's coming on October 30th, and if you guys are interested, highly recommend you guys to check it out. I am planning on covering more games on the channel so that I can bring more variety, so make sure that you guys check out that video. Plus, I have a second channel. I'm going to put the link in the comment section down below, and you guys can pretty much go subscribe to that channel because I do make a Genshin content on that channel. So if you guys are interested in Genshin, highly recommend you guys to subscribe to that channel. But let's not waste any time and let's go ahead and hop right into the video. So the first unit we're going to go over is Albelda. So as you guys know, Albelda is untargetable, which is very, very good because if you pair that up with Trauma Raid Tier 7, the back row is completely invincible to the enemy. They cannot pay any attention to Trauma Raid and Albelda because they're both untargetable. So therefore, they're only going to focus on the front row but you can't forget that even though she is untargetable she can still receive damage so if, she, if she's going up against enemies like gusting flight eric masno yiwa every single time she's going up against an enemy that does aoe damage she's going to receive that damage so you do have to be careful when it comes to that but other than that the untargetable skill is insanely cracked and you pair that up with the attack and defense buff this is what makes her insanely cracked She's able to increase attack and defense of allies who are right next to her. But a, a con that I will talk about is the fact that she's not able to um, target the unit with the highest attack. So therefore, this can pretty much mess up your team formation. So let's say you, you're going up against Endorsey in the enemy team. In Endorsey, she targets the back row all the time. So you would want to put your DPS units in the front row so that and Dorsey won't one tap Albelda while she's targeting, let's say, Kaiser or another DPS character. So if you put them in the front row, you have to put Kaiser right next to Albelda. And that would require you to put a Kaiser or Albelda in the middle, like literally in the middle of the front row. And then the tank unit would have to be all the way in the right or left side. So I will say when it comes to her target, like when she's targeting the ally with like this buff for a passive this can interrupt your team formation so that is a con that i wanted to point out but other than that this passive is amazing and then what's also crazy is this debuff right here the attack and defense debuff this is insanely cracked especially against bosses not only are you decreasing the boss's defense which is very good but you're also decreasing the boss's attack and this allows you to not only deal crazy damage but you can also survive for a pretty long time because of the attack uh, debuff. So, Festing Resentment is insanely busted. And last but not least, we have her special move, Hopeful Decision, which pretty much amplifies her passive 10 times more. And she has that uh, invincibility for three seconds for the target she's targeting with her passive. Like, man, this unit is just so cracked. So, she has so many pros. So many pros. She's able to apply, you know, great survivability for the ally she's targeting with her passive. She's able to reduce attack and defense. She's able to apply attack and defense by a lot for your ally. She's a cracked unit. And then for her revolution, you know, for tier four and five, you have the energy increase. You have the active skill cooldown reduction by 20 seconds, which is insanely busted. And then for her exclusive equipment, she has the swiftness decrease, swiftness increase, 500 energy whenever uh, the ally who has power of, spirit, power of spirits defeats an enemy healing like bro this unit's kid is so stacked like i can literally take a pile of pancakes stack like 30 stacks and that's not even enough compared to her kit so she's just absolutely crazy but when it comes to the cons we have to pay attention to the cons she is weak when it comes to aoe damage whenever she's going up against yiwa especially in arena evan kel trauma ray uh, any every single time she's going up against an enemy that has aoe damage she does get one tapped plus her passive is like a double-edged sword because i'm making pretty much mess up your team formation so those are like the two major uh cons i can see in albelda but other than that 
the pros outweigh the cons. So this unit is still amazing despite the cons, still an amazing support unit, especially the fact that she is free to play friendly. The fact that she's able to work with low dupes makes her really, really valuable because compared to Garam, uh, Garam does need a lot more copies than Albelda. So I feel like that does put Albelda ahead due to the fact that, you know, Albelda is very free to play friendly and she works with low dupes. And another thing I forgot to point out is that her untargetable skill allows her to pretty much have a flexible build. So when you're building her like ignition weapon, like if you're trying to figure out which ignition weapon set is good for her, the default support ignition weapon is always Dora's set or a Runda set, right? But the fact that she's untargetable, you pretty much have the ability to build attack speed set on her so that you can focus on increasing her attack. So the fact that she's able to have that luxury because of the untargetable skill is very beneficial. Plus, you can put like effect resistance and effect hit for slot four and five so that she won't receive, you know, debuffs and she's able to land her attack and defense decrease on the enemy. So she's able to have a flexible build thanks to her untargetable skill. Now, moving on from that, we have Garam, the queen herself. So Garam, you guys already know the best thing about Garam is the fact that she has AoE buff. The fact that she, her buff is able to apply to the entire team makes her a very powerful support unit because her special move is like the best part about like the best part about her kit is her special move. As soon as she lands that special move, she stuns the enemy for five seconds, which is really good. If you're going up against uh, Evan in adventure mode, Evan is very annoying with his uh, immortality special move and Garam can pretty much interrupt that and she can prevent Evan from spamming it, which is really good. So her special move, very, very nice. And then you have that special move pierce increase. You have the physical magic resistance increase. Like her special move is just chef's kiss. And then of course you have the defense decrease from her active skill blue sword aura. And the fact that she's able to seal the enemy with the highest attack pretty much increases your team's overall survivability. And then of course with her passive, she has that a shield, which is really good. And plus she's able to purify and remove all debuffs from allies. So she's a really like, she's really like an AOE type support unit, like her buffs, her debuffs, her, you know, status effects or whatever, it applies to the whole team. So she's able to benefit the entire team versus Albelda, who's majorly benefiting that one unit who's right next to her. So that's, that's like a huge uh, pro for Garam, the fact that she's able to benefit the entire team. Meanwhile, Albelda is mostly benefiting that one unit who's right next to her. And then when you look at her revolution, her revolution is where things start to get crazy. So for tier four, you got that attack increase. You get 100% in total, which is insanely busted, especially against bosses. And then for revolution tier five, you have that 200 energy recovery, which is really dope. So her revolution, very, very nice. And then for her exclusive equipment, you have um, HP recovery. You also have uh, HP recovery block. You have the magic and resistant magic and physical resistance shred for 20%, which is also really good. So her kit, like Garam is a very stacked universal support character, really, really good. And like I said, she benefits the whole team. So her pros are very, very nice. But when it comes to her cons, now, when it comes to cons, I will say for Garam, she does need a lot more copies than Albelda. And the reason why is because you want her to use her special move. When she uses her special move immediately, that changes everything. She can do so many things with her ultimate. And once she activates it, it's like everything just completely changes. So I will say the fact that she's like an ultimate reliant unit where like she relies on her ultimate in order for it to be extremely effective. You do have to get at like you literally have to max her out so that you can get her full value. So I will say she does need more copies than Albelda. So therefore, a Grom is not as free to play friendly as Albelda. And that already puts Albelda, you know, above her because Albelda is a free to play friendly support type character. But when it comes to, you know, buffing uh, Albelda, she's mostly buffing that one unit that's right, right next to her. And Garam is buffing everybody, which makes her very, very strong. So two characters like they're good in their own ways and they're both special and unique so when it comes to comparing both characters i can see 
you know, Garam's cons, and I can also see Abelda's cons. But when we both look at when we look at their pros, we can all come to like come to an agreement that their pros are beneficial for you know everybody because Albelda she works with everybody. She's able to buff every single unit that she's next to. She's able to buff them and she's able to make them a lot stronger. And then for Garam, she pretty much works with everybody as well. So they're both very similar but when it comes to their utility when it comes to their usage and when it comes to their account uh two completely different units and if you guys haven't watched my uh guide video this team i've been enjoying this team so much because albelda is able to pretty much buff trauma ray meanwhile princess zanak is buffing kunadon because he has the highest attack albelda can pretty much enable team comps like this because you have two dps characters that are supported by two support characters which is very very good so overall both characters are absolutely amazing and then when we look at the underground laboratory i mean albelda is completely dominating the boss meta right now everybody is using her um for my record i did like 3.5 billion damage against data Mashini, and this was a team that i used so she is really really good against bosses because of that attack and defense reduction plus she has that huge attack buff for the ally that's right next to her which is very beneficial for kaiser i mean this unit is just completely out of this world and then the same thing applies for garam it's just that for garam she just needs more copies in order for you to pretty much receive full value from garam meanwhile for albelda you can receive her full value with low dupes excluding the you know revolution besides the revolution you can receive albelda's full value with low dupes and i feel like that that's what makes her really really strong so in conclusion both characters very very good in their own ways but in terms of like when it comes to the free-to-play aspect of things when it comes to free-to-play players i will say that albelda is way better in the free-to-play player's eyes because she is far more valuable with low dupes meanwhile for garam you need more copies in order for you to receive full value from garam so both characters are still dope like i'm not saying that garam is trash no both characters are still amazing it's just that they're special in their own ways and in my opinion in my opinion i will say that uh, both characters are situational when we're comparing them but i do feel like albelda she's just She's crazy, man. This unit is just crazy, and she's just a very powerful support character. But of course, I still use Garam with her, of course. Garam is still crap, for sure. But that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to talk about in today's video. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. And share your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you guys think? Do you guys think Albelda is better than Garam, or is Garam better than Albelda?